A recent options trading article has been making the rounds through numerous major financial publications recently regarding SoftBank Group's $4 billion options bets in the tech market and how that massive position actually exacerbated the tech rally that we saw recently. But how exactly would their massive option purchases help fuel stock price rallies? Because if they're purchasing the options on these stocks, then that means they are not directly purchasing the shares themselves. And if they're not purchasing the shares directly, that means their demand is not actually pumping up those stock prices. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how their massive option bets actually did help fan the flames of the recent tech rally that we saw. Our journey today starts with understanding the basics of call options, which are the financial contracts that SoftBank Group was purchasing to the tune of about $4 billion, which is a huge deal in the option markets. A purchaser of a call option is making a bet that the stock price will increase significantly before the option reaches its respective expiration date. The purchaser actually gains massive leverage because they are purchasing a position or an option that represents future ownership of 100 shares of stock. But to enter these call option positions, they actually require a fraction of the cost that it would require to actually purchase 100 shares of the stock directly. After purchasing these call options, if the stock price increases rapidly, so does the value of the call options, leading to massive percentage gains. Now it's best to learn with examples, so let's go ahead and take a look at a call option position that resembles something similar to what SoftBank Group would have entered in recent weeks. In this image, we are looking at call options on Amazon, which is a technology company that SoftBank very likely has a call option position in. We can see that purchasing 5,000 of these call options would require $122 million, which is well within the realm of an option portfolio valued at $4 billion. We can see that the trading platform is telling me that the delta of this call option position is a positive $217,900. Now this means if SoftBank purchases this option position and Amazon goes up by $1, their option position is expected to make $217,900. And if we were to extrapolate that linearly, if Amazon were to increase by $100, that means that they would make approximately $22 million from this option position. But here's where things get interesting. If SoftBank Group purchases 5,000 of these Amazon call options, then that means somebody else has to sell these options to them. And since this is a massively large position, an institution is likely to be the counterparty for SoftBank Group's position if they are to purchase these 5,000 call options. So if SoftBank purchases 5,000 of these Amazon call options, that means another institution needs to sell them the 5,000 call options, in which case their risk profile would be completely opposite of SoftBank Groups. So since SoftBank Group is expected to make $217,900 with this call position, if Amazon increases by $1, that means the counterparty that sold them these call options is expected to lose $217,900 if Amazon goes up $1. So what this institution will do to hedge that position is they will purchase shares of stock and each share of stock has a delta of one, meaning that if you buy 25 shares of stock and the stock price goes up $1, you will make $25. So to completely hedge this position, SoftBank Group's counterparty would effectively buy 217,900 shares of Amazon stock. And then what this means is that if Amazon goes up $1, SoftBank's counterparty would lose $217,900 on, on the option position that they have, which is the short call position, meaning they sold the call options to SoftBank. But since they purchased 217,900 shares of Amazon stock, if the stock price goes up by $1, they will make $217,900 on their stock position, which would completely offset the loss from their option position. But the delta of an option position, meaning its expected price change with each $1 change in the stock price, is dynamic. Meaning that as the stock price changes and as time passes and other things, the option's directional exposure or profitability 
per $1 change in the stock price will change. And this is estimated by something called gamma, which is the change in an option position's delta as the stock price changes. Specifically for call options, as the stock price increase, the delta of the call option position will also increase. So this means for SoftBank Group, if they buy this call option position and their initial delta is 220,000, as Amazon shares increase, the delta position will actually increase as well. So let's say Amazon stock shoots higher after they enter this call option position and now their position delta is 300,000, which means if Amazon goes up another dollar, SoftBank Group's call option position is expected to profit by $300,000 as opposed to the initial $218,000. Now what this means for SoftBank is that with the next $1 increase in Amazon stock, their call option position is estimated to make $300,000 as opposed to the initial $218,000 per $1 increase in Amazon. Now what that means for the counterparty is that their risk has increased. Now remember that when they initially sold the call options to SoftBank, their delta position was negative $217,900. And to offset that, they purchased 217,900 shares of Amazon stock to completely eliminate the directional risk of that call option position that they sold to SoftBank. But since Amazon shares have gone up in our hypothetical example, and now the position's delta is 300,000, that means SoftBank's counterparty has an option position with a delta of negative 300,000. And remember, they only own around 218,000 shares of stock. So this means if Amazon goes up $1, they will make $218,000 from their stock position, but now they will lose $300,000 from their call option position. And obviously this leaves them with a loss of around $82,000. So what SoftBank's counterparty has to do in this scenario, after they shorted the call position, hedged it, and then the stock price went up, increasing the sensitivity of their call option position to actually rebalance or re-hedge their call option position completely, they have to purchase an additional 82,000 shares of Amazon stock. Now, if you think about this, initially they shorted the call options by selling them to SoftBank and then they hedged the position by purchasing shares of stock. But then as the stock price increased, they had to buy more shares of stock to re-hedge their call option position. And as the stock price continues in increasing, SoftBank Group's counterparty will have to continuously purchase more shares of stock, and obviously that's going to increase the upward pressure in Amazon's stock price. So when you see these SoftBank articles that explain how SoftBank's massive call option purchases have actually fanned the flames of the tech rally that we saw recently, it's not because the call option positions directly inflated the stock prices, it's because the counterparty to their large call option purchases has to buy shares of stock to hedge their position. And due to the nature of how call options work, as the stock price increases, so does the sensitivity of that call options price relative to each subsequent $1 increase in the stock price. And that means for SoftBank's counterparty, as Amazon stock continues increasing, the counterparty has to purchase more and more shares of stock to re-hedge their position and eliminate their increased directional exposure from the increase in size of that call option position that they initially sold to SoftBank. So next time you read these articles that explain uh, the natural hedging mechanics of SoftBank's position and how the counterparty had to effectively purchase shares to reduce that risk, now you understand exactly what these articles are talking about. To clarify, I am not suggesting that the example in this video is the exact position that SoftBank has, but it resembles conceptually exactly what is going on and what happens when SoftBank purchases these huge option positions. They have a counterparty that takes the other side of that, and the counterparty, they probably don't want the directional risk, and naturally, to hedge a short call position, meaning you sold a call option to another party and you have an, an open position in those call options, you have to purchase shares of stock 
to offset the losses on your call option position as the stock price increases. And due to the nature of how call options work, as the stock price increases, so does the position size or the sensitivity of that call option position to subsequent increases in the stock price. And therefore, you have to purchase more and more shares as the stock price is increasing. And if SoftBank's counterparty has to continuously purchase more shares as the stock price is increasing, and as all the FOMO Robinhood investors are also piling in, this obviously can lead to a massive short-term increase in stock prices. I'm not claiming that SoftBank's activity is the only factor that resulted in the recent tech rally, but it is a factor nonetheless, because as described in this video, the natural hedging activities of SoftBank's counterparty is somewhat of a feedback loop because they have to continue to purchase more shares as the stock price increases. And if you're buying shares into stock price rallies, you are further fueling those rallies. If you like this video and found it informative, I would really appreciate if you smash the like button down below as it would help support the channel and get this video in front of more people who can then improve their financial literacy, which is a good thing in today's world. And lastly, if you want more options trading videos, please check out the rest of my channel and consider subscribing if you like what you see. My name is Chris with Project Option and I will see you in the next video.